Okay, time to start the next video, and this one is going to continue where our last video left off. Um, so I'm going to file open recent to uh, my first zoo sign, my ZS1. And the thing that I'm going to do now is continue with this project. So as you recall, there are three layers here. That's where, this is where we're starting. We're going to shut off the middle layer so we just see our animal and our background. Our animal drawing, I should say, and our background. All right, so from there, I want to show you how easy it is to change the color of the animal if you want to change it. Um, by the way, in some cases, the color is an identifying feature of the animal. So maybe you'll want to stick with something that's that, you know, the same uh, color. So I'm going to choose an orangish red, which also happens to fit my color scheme. I want it to be a little bit different from the, uh, from the orange I already used, so it stands out. I'm going to use my paint bucket and click on the fox, and you can see it automatically changes. The next step is I want to create a pattern on the actual fox. So it's not it's going to be similar to how we created a pattern in the background, except I don't want it to be on the whole layer like our background is. I only want it to be where the fox appears. So, so to add a design to our fox, we need to use the magic wand tool. Your magic wand tool might be hidden underneath what's called the quick selection tool. It's not the normal paintbrush, it's a different kind of paintbrush. So you may have to hold that down to access the magic wand. Assuming that you're on the fox drawing layer, you can use the magic wand, and the magic wand works by color. So if I click it on something that's all the same color, which is why we did this all in one color, um, you'll see that it selects the whole object. If you didn't do it all in one color, you should recopy over the color, the extra colors that you added, because at this point you're supposed to keep it one color. We are about to add a new color a very specific way. So I'm going to make sure I'm on the correct layer. I'm going to go over to my paintbrush tool and I'm going to show you how a selection works. Oh, first I'm going to change my color to maybe a gray. There you go. Alright, now what I can do now is I'm going to make sure I'm on my drawing layer. I'm going to use my brush and I'm going to make sure my brush's hardness is still high and I'm going to start painting on this picture. Now I don't want my background to be interacted with. I only want to draw where there's a fox. So this selection will not allow me to draw off the fox. So this dotted line means that I could scribble over the whole page and what's happening, only the fox is actually being covered by gray. But I don't want my whole fox to be gray. I just wanted to show you how that worked. Now I could establish like what parts of the fox are gray if I wanted to, or if I was doing a zebra, maybe I would give it stripes using the same method. Um, but that's not really what I'm going for. I actually want this to, I just want the shape and maybe the colors to give away what my animal is. Um, so I'm command and I'm holding alt and Z to step backwards in time right now. And I'm just going to make a design on my fox. So I'm going to make my size of my brush smaller and I'm going to scribble all over the whole page. And again, this is fine to be a scribble. It doesn't have to be a specific design. If you want to make a design, you certainly can. But we're going to continue to explore the filters. Um, by the way, any filter that you used prior to right now is off limits for the rest because I don't want you to use twirl 43 times. Once you know what it is, you've already explored it. I want you to use something else. So I'm going to go to filter now and choose something that I haven't already used before. What I should stay away from, by the way, is distort. Because at the off chance that I were to choose one of the distort things and I were to play with their knobs and press OK, you'd see that it distorts the shape of the fox. I'm going to Command Z that. Um, we don't want to disturb the shape of the animal because that's an identifying feature of how people are going to recognize that this is a sign about a fox. So I'm going to go to Filter and find something other than distort, even though distort has a lot of my favorites. So let's see, how about if I go to texture and put in, let's see what patchwork looks like. Okay, that's pretty cool. I'm going to okay that. Uh, let's see if I were to go to texture again and add this. I don't even know what that is. Well, that looks pretty neat. Press okay. I like that actually already. But I'm going to again go for three because I don't want the kid next to me to have the same thing as me. So I'm going to add a grain to it as the last step. Um, while I'm here, this big thing opened up, which is kind of, it shows me different options. So I'm going to check the different options, and I love that. So I think I'm going to keep that, that stained glass. By the way, you'll notice that some of your textures 
um, destroy previous textures like you can now see that it no longer has that grain and some of your textures add to them for example now if I go back to my filters and I go to texture again and add grain it'll add to the already existing stained glass that I just put on so um, you're, that's going to take some uh, practice and skill to figure out which does what alright now that I have my fox complete I'm going to press command D to release the fox from the selection so now that I have the shape of my fox to have its own and very different um, textures and design, uh, I now want to add a couple more things to complete this project. Um, they're all short things, but they're effects that I can use to make these make it stand out a little bit more. Right now, being that I chose colors that were specifically close to my background colors, which isn't necessarily a bad idea, but in this case, it's making it a little bit tougher to distinguish some of the areas of my fox to make it clear. So I want to add what's called contrast. Contrast basically means differences. So if you have two things that are the opposite, they contrast each other. For example, light and dark, or um, warm colors and cool colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click right here. Uh, that's on the actual silhouette or drawing layer and I'm going to add what's called a stroke which is like an outline. Um, if I click the word stroke I can modify the size of the stroke but I don't want it to be anything crazy. I want it to just um, create a little bit of a divide between my fox design and my background design. So black is one color choice. I can also choose colors like white and either one makes them equally stand out. I might even choose like an orange and that stands out or I could char choose like a blue and that stands out but I think orange did the best so that's the one I'm going to choose. And actually I really think that maybe white is the way to go. Yes, I like white so I'm going to press OK and then when I'm ha if I'm happy with my stroke, if I don't want to make any more changes, I could press OK and now my fox stands out against my background. So contrast literally makes things pop from whatever's behind them um, by using things that are different from other things like for example light like the outline and darker like the background. Alright so next step is to add text. For text you're gonna use this tool right here which is called the text tool conveniently. I'm gonna click it and I'm going to click somewhere on my background where I think I might want the text to be. I'm not going to click and drag a box, I'm just going to click and release. So just like every other tool, you're going to go up here to change your text. So this is my least favorite text in all of Photoshop is Marriott Pro and that's what all of yours is set to default. So if I write Fox here, um, that'll work, but it is the most boring text I've ever seen. In fact, this text is so boring that it's the text that if you um, bring your pet to the doctors, like to the vet, and the vet, the doctor says that the that the animal is really, really sick and has to be put to sleep, which means forever. Um, the way that they put the animal to sleep is they show it this text. It's that dull. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go up to our options area and change the options of this text. I highlighted it first, or I could delete it and uh, change my my the things about my text first. By the way, this is the size. I can choose any of the sizes that it has, and if that's not big enough, I can add to it, um, typing in whatever number I want. And I can go to Marriott, the the place here that shows the different uh, fonts, and find something more interesting. For example, Rosewood STD is a really cool one. Uh, this one looks really nice, and I think I like this one for Fox though. I feel like that suits it. So now that I've selected Noteworthy as my font, I can start typing. Um, and make sure that you're on the text tool. I just realized that I wasn't on the text tool. So now F O X. All right, so I'm going to move my word fox using my move tool. You'll see that it appeared on its own layer, by the way. I'm going to move that over. And you can see that it also doesn't contrast from the background very well. So first thing I'm going to do is double click it the same way I did before and go to my stroke to add that outline which will help. Now I want to match the rest of my piece. There's no black pretty much except for a little tiny bits of it here. So I'm going to change that to white as well. Um, I'm also going to change the color of my text by going back to my text tool. Okay, to change the color of my actual text I have to highlight it and then I can go up here and change the color. I want it to be another orange. Okay.
Uh, I'm now going to click off of it by just clicking the Move tool, placing it where I want. I think I'm going to add something else to that fox to really make it stand out, um, which is going to be, I'm going to double click again and add another effect. This one's called a Drop Shadow. If I click the word Drop Shadow, it'll allow me to change the distance of the Drop Shadow, change the size of the Drop Shadow, and change the, uh, the spread and the size of the Drop Shadow. So let's see, I'm going to make it a little bit closer to the letters to make those letters pop out. Okay, I actually feel like this should be called the spread and this should be called the size, but whatever. Press OK. All right, now I also want my piece to have unity, which means I want to make them look like they go together. So I feel like now fox looks too different from the actual fox. So I'm going to click this layer and I'm going to add a drop shadow to that one too. Now you don't have to add all these things. In fact, if your color designed animal um, comes up from the background on its own, you may not even have needed to add the stroke. All right, so I'm going to change the distance, work with all these knobs, never leave them default. All right, press OK. And this is my finished zoo sign for the fox. The last thing I'm going to add is my name right down here. And it's definitely unnecessary that this is big because all I want my name to be, I don't want it to be the centerpiece of my artwork. I want it to be something that people can look at if they see my artwork first and they're curious to know who it is. I forgot for a second that my first name is Mr. And my last name is Sear. I might, however, give that just a little bit of contrast by going over to that stroke one last time. So this is a complete project. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, boys and girls. You're going to have to do a few different zoo signs. I really want you to explore those textures and show contrast and unity in your piece. So although that was the last step, I do want to add one more thing. We're going to file save our work. By the way, Command S is something that you should do all the time, not just at the end of a piece or the end of a day. You should really do it every time you do something that you think is cool. So um, I'm going to save right now. And if for any reason I didn't name it before, I would want to go to File, Save As. And that will allow me to change the name and or destination of the, of the artwork. I'm going to keep shooting mine to the desktop. Ultimately, I have to save them in my S drive, which is explained in another video. So I'm going to leave you with this. Feel free to comment if you would like and let me know how I can make my videos even better or let me know what you enjoyed about the video. Thanks so much. Have a great day, boys and girls.